Hello, it's Deanie. Lately, I've been going on a nostalgia trip when it comes to thinking about all of the weird and awesome books I read as a kid. So I decided, let's make a series and let's reminisce together. So in this installment, I'm going to be talking about some dystopian slash post-apocalyptic, may as well be the same thing, kind of books that I read from like 2003 to 2006. So first up, we got The Barcode Tattoo by Suzanne Wayne, and this was published in 2004. So this is a futuristic dystopian that has already dated itself because if it was published today, it would be a QR code instead of a barcode. So I'll be honest, I very vaguely remember reading this, but I very much remember this cover. And for some reason it sparked nostalgia for me that I'm like, I don't remember anything about this book, but I don't care. <laughs> and then even after I read like its little synopsis thingy, still couldn't remember anything, but here's what the synopsis kind of thing is. So this is a society where everyone has to get a barcode tattoo, but then our special protagonist, obviously the white girl on the cover named Kayla, doesn't want that. So she must run away because it's either that or her life. Teenagers being dramatic, you know? And literally that's the end of the synopsis on Goodreads. This is probably why I don't remember what the contents are of this book. Also found out that it's a trilogy and I just looked up the other books and in the third book, it says, just as in the original barcode tattoo, the year is 2025. So I guess you could say this is a bit of a PSA that people we need to look out because we're going to be having barcode tattoos pretty soon. Okay, I'm continuing reading the little descriptions for these books. And the synopsis for the second book is literally the same as the first. And then the third book is thrown in a bunch of random stuff. Now I'm regretting not going through this trilogy. I was missing out. And this nostalgia trip just turned into me roasting a book. That was unexpected for me. And only the first book is available through my library ebook thing. Now I can't even finish it. I can't participate in this weirdness. I'm sad. I just wanted to soak up some nostalgia. But maybe I'll reread the first one. And then just be like, that. that's fine. That's enough. But the next book I'm going to talk about, I actually remember a little bit more. And I actually still own it, and that's Green Angel by Alice Hoffman, and it was published in 2003. It is also part of a trilogy that I never read the last two books of. I was not much of a completionist as a child. So in this book, the protagonist is a 15-year-old girl named Green, and she's kind of left alone after her family dies in this, like, really bad disaster, and she's left in this kind of awful world where, like, nothing grows, and it's just all ash. So she retreats into her ruined garden and she starts like destroying her past self. And I believe she actually starts like tattooing herself as a way for her to be like, I'm no longer that past person. But then as she's going through this really dark time, she gets like these mysterious encounters where she has to relearn the lessons of love and then like kind of heal herself. I remember rereading this book often. It was only like 128 pages, so it is super short. And since I still own it, I may reread it. However, I'm sad because my library doesn't have the second two of the trilogy. So I'll never get to finish it. At least not now. But the next book I'm going to talk about, I again own it and it's a standalone. So if I decide to reread it, then I can actually fully enjoy the entire story. This book is Beautiful City of the Dead by Leander Watts and it was published in 2006. And it sort of doesn't fit in this category of dystopia or post-apocalyptic, but it's a really weird book and I didn't know where else to put it when I was making lists of all my nostalgia reads. So in this book, there is a band called Scorpio Bone and it is led by this dude named Relly. They have a guitarist, a kind of dim-witted drummer, if I remember right, and then this golden god of a singer, but they're missing a bassist. And that's where this special girl named Z comes in because she has a notebook full of these strange lyrics and I guess the perfect attitude to deal with these dudes because they're all a bit off. So this band is into creating a new type of music called ghost metal and they are a super passionate and emo group of teenagers. Here is a quote from the book. Now that we're together, the four of us is going to start the big time, the biggest thing you ever saw. Relly says. When we get cranking, the four of us, we can cross over to the other side, the other world. It takes four and no more. It takes four to win the war. Isn't, isn't that just a beautiful quote? It takes four to win the war. Which sounds really weird because it's just like a band of people. 
And that's where you're wrong, because they're not just a band of four teens. They're actually all gods. And immortal if they stay together. So that's where the actual stakes come in into this book, because then they have to fight this other group of gods who are adults, because they are also missing a bassist, and then they're like, hey, young girl, please join our immortal group. And it's so weird. And saying that sentence out loud made me go, wow, this is, what is this book? Now I really want to reread it. Dang, am I going to reread this soon? I hope so. And the final series I'm going to talk about is pretty well known, but it has a new installment. So now I can reread the series, and this is a series I did actually finish, and then now relive a new experience in the same world. So I'm talking about the Ugly series by Scott Westerfeld, and the first book was published in 2005. So this includes Uglies, Pretties, Specials, and Extras. And I loved this series. It's set in a utopia because it's post-scarcity, but everyone is like ugly when they're born, and you don't become pretty until you turn 16 and have to go through surgery. So the book follows almost 16-year-old Tally Youngblood, and it goes on her adventures from wanting to get the surgery, meeting another ugly person, who then becomes her friend, but then the girl runs away, and then now it's time for Tally to actually become a pretty, but then, like, the government people are like, no, you have to go chase after your friend because everyone must be pretty or die or something. Basically, we don't like people who, you know, go against us. They can't live out in the weird desert place by themselves and just, you know, do them. You're gonna go chase after them, or else you don't become a pretty. You know, the typical high stakes things that you make a 16 year old be responsible for. So the book had themes of like identity, beauty, beauty, what is, what is beauty? Beauty, dystopian society, and humanity. Can we stop ending with TY? Anyways, it's a book that you're supposed to learn from, teach the youngins that beauty isn't everything. Does it live up to that? I don't remember, but I remember liking it. And now on to the new installment in this kind of world is Imposters. And it's already out because it came out in 2018. So this book seems to be adding like a new type of person. Like there were uglies, pretty, specials, extra, you know, like different types of adding to people, making them pretty, adding special gadgets or something. I don't know. Like now this is imposters where you have a double and they're there to protect you. So that's an added element. And this book seems to be following a new set of people not like Tally from the first quartet. We have Frey and Raffi, who I think are siblings, and one is supposed to die for the other, or at least like kill and protect the life of the other person, which seems like a horrible sibling dynamic, but I guess you know family love. Honestly, if I hadn't read the first Ugly series, I would not be interested in this book, but nostalgia makes me want to read it after I maybe read the first four. If I never read the first four, then this book's never getting read. But I, if I actually enjoy rereading the first four, then I'll, I'll go on to this book. But that's it for my nostalgia reads for like dystopian post-apocalyptic. Let me know in the comments if you remember any books like this. Don't include Hunger Games, we all remember that. I want like obscure reads. Thanks for watching!